Hi, I'm Tom DeShield, Director of R&D at Matrix Shafts. Thank you for watching our Shafts Tech Series on the Hacker's Paradise. We got a lot of good feedback and some questions, so we wanted to make another video, take some more time, answer those questions, and go into what makes a graphite shaft in a little more detail. So, again, we're going to start with the raw materials that make a graphite shaft. Now, the carbon fiber starts out as uh, either a pan fiber or a pitch fiber, and that's called the precursor. And we take that and we run it through an oven. Now, as it goes through the oven, you can vary the temperature and you can also vary the tension on the fiber itself. As you increase the tension, you can try to stabilize and align all the carbon molecules in the fiber. And by doing that, you can change the stiffness or the elastic modulus of the material. This is what you'll hear people refer to as a ton or an MSI of a carbon fiber, which represents your standard, your intermediate, your high modulus materials. Now, as we vary the modulus of the material and increase the modulus, the elongation to failure of that fiber will decrease. That means the stiffer you make a fiber, the more brittle it becomes. Now, after the carbon fiber comes out of the oven, you'll see that it changed from uh, a white fiber to a black fiber and it gets spooled up again. We'll take a large number of spools, put them together, and start stringing off the individual fibers. On either side, or both sides of the fibers, we have an epoxy film that gets rolled together with the fibers. We apply pressure and heat, and we get one wide sheet, continuous sheet, of what we call prepreg. So, all the carbon fibers on this prepreg are running in the longitudinal direction. Now, by varying how many spools of material we use, we can change the area weight. By changing the thickness of the epoxy, we change the resin content, and those are all things that we'll use along with the different fiber types to design a shaft. So, the important things when designing a shaft include weight, your center of gravity, the stiffness profile of the shaft, and torque. When we're designing a new shaft, we have targets for all these based on the market, the player, and the performance we want out of the shaft. So, to calculate those things, Really, you can do it with just a few equations. If you look at this round cross-section as the cross-section of your shaft, you have your outside diameter and your inside diameter. We have our elastic modulus from our fiber. That fiber also has a shear modulus. So by using your elastic modulus and cross-sectional properties, you can calculate the flex profile along the entire length of the shaft using your shear modulus and your inertial properties of the cross section you can calculate the torque so if you look at these two graphs here which show the stiffness profile and the torque profile you see that they will pretty much fall along a geometry change in the shaft from butt to tip once you have your design done, you take the prepreg that we made up here and you start cutting out the individual plies or flags to make the shaft. So now you use your prepreg that you made up here. All your fibers are running in one direction. You have a number of different plies and they will be oriented in different directions to change the fiber direction. This ply here would give you 45 degree fibers which you would use to influence torque. 
These other flags here have longitudinal fibers which you'd use to influence flex. After you have your plies cut out and kitted together, you start rolling them on one at a time on a steel mandrel. Once you get all your plies on, you wrap the entire assembly with a cello tape. When you apply the cello tape, it has a tension on it, and that applies pressure to the entire part. Once you get all your parts uh, wrapped in cello tape, you put them in an oven. It's usually 250 degrees for one hour. And during that time, a chemical reaction takes place in the epoxy resin. And after the end of that hour, you have one solid homogeneous part. Then you take the shaft off the mandrel, and then you strip off the cello tape. And what you have is one solid shaft that has a, a high number of little rings on it from the overlap of the cello wrap. You sand that off, get a nice smooth surface, and then you put on your cosmetic, and then you're done. And we have a couple more videos uh, for some more specific questions also. Thank <laughs> you.